snuggled in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. Today, Jim's special guest, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Ruby Sin. I'm Zach Drew, along with the Morningside Band. And now, direct from Gray Street at Morningside, here are your hosts, Jim and Lori Baker. to Gray Street. Yeah. What a wonderful audience we have today. We do. Let's welcome everybody. Come yeah. on, welcome your friends, the neighbors. Great to have all of you here. And so I want to give you the first copy. Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> Grab my seat is good for the first time. There it is. Woo! The Code of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn. The biggest thing, you're, the biggest problem, if you're going to use this as a devotional, is to not sneak and read ahead. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can read it either way. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, it's, right. made, it's made to exist on every level, on all those levels, but you can read it either way. Yeah. But, but the other thing is that, really, there's so much packed that it's hard if, you know, to, you, to digest it, to, I mean, to keep going, to keep, keep, keep yeah. going without digesting it, but also to, applying it. But you can yeah. do both. You can read it and then you can take it back and apply it. Though the first few pages... It's very different. So, yeah, different. Yeah, so yeah, it's different very, and unique. Yeah, yeah. The first pages don't have number. They have Roman numerals on them because, but they're not an introduction. They, they, they are part of the story. Right. But, but I wanted, yeah. we wanted to keep very the helpful. mystery, the page number for each one mm -hmm. is the day. As you get to the end, there are more things about heaven because yes. it's coming to the end. It's yes. coming to the final mysteries. This book has stirred me. I am so happy to have this because this is how, you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't want any more than this for now on a page. <laughs> Right. Because it could, really, yeah. I want to, it tur my brain, it turns my brain up. It wakes my brain up. <laughs> and then I go to thinking and then I meditate upon mm -hmm. it. Now, infinity in a jar. You're talking mm -hmm. about the teacher comes into the room with a clay jar and a question he said, can that which is little contain that which is big? Mm -hmm. And you say no. Well, I didn't. I didn't say no. He said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the student says no, he says no. I answer. Can that which is finite encompass that which is infinite? No, I said again. But it can, he replied. How? He lifted the jar and removed the cap from its top. It can, he said. It can if it's open. It's an open if vessel. If it's an open vessel. Is that good? Yes. Is that already got you thinking? Already. Already. He, it can, he said. It can, if it's an open vessel. A closed vessel can never contain anything larger than its own size. That's right. Forgive me, Rabbi. I'll, 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 Rabbi Do I'll it. Just you should remember. be doing the audio version. No, <laughs> <really good. laughs> but an open vessel has no limitations. Amen. Oh, oh. you don't know me. <laughs> oh. After reading this, I come driving to work. Mm -hmm. I don't, this is not work. This is my fun. This is your, yeah, life. <laughs> That's when I decided I was going to put the train back in that was taken away. Wow. I, I, I'm serious. Wow. I've always wanted my train back. And somebody's going to help me buy my train back if we have to buy it back. Maybe they'll give it to me. Aww. It's in a warehouse somewhere. But to know today. Wow. I said, I can do it. Even if they mock me, the little kids won't. The old ladies won't because they'll ride the train. The <laughs> old men right. will drive it, That's right? That's right. <laughs> Godly people won't make fun. Mm. But I... It now can contain the blowing of the wind or the outpouring of the rain. Mm. It could even contain the flowing of a river. Yeah. Do you want to, uh, you're, it's your show yeah. you're supposed to be talking. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. You're, doing, you're doing great. <laughs> it no. would take a long time to contain a river. It could take forever. But the principle is the same. Mm -hmm. And the reason you're showing me this, which is larger that which you know or that which you don't know. That which I don't know, I would think. 
So then it's only wise that you seek that which you don't know, I guess. But how do you contain that which is bigger than you? Woo. That which is bigger than your ability to comprehend. By becoming an open vessel, I said. Yes, said the teacher. Only by opening yourself up can you come to know that which you don't already know. And only by becoming an open vessel can you contain that which is greater than yourself. <laughs> My whole life, I've been made fun of. My whole life, I've had people say, oh, you're just, you're just this ignorant person who just keeps doing things. But I can open up. Mm -hmm. this vessel right and my god will pour into it that's right you can do yes, all things yes, yes. through Amen. christ and only by becoming an opening open vessel can you contain that which is greater than yourself the truth is always greater than our knowing your mind and heart are finite clay jars but the truth has no end. God has no end. The eternal is infinite. Always flowing. Like the river, I said. Yes, he said. But when the jar opens itself, it becomes unlimited. It can contain the waters of the river. So open now your mind, your heart, and your life. For it is only the open vessel and an open heart that can contain the infinity of God. And then the teacher gives the mission. You want to give the mission for yes. the day? <laughs> today, this is the, as he wrote, the, writes down, today, open your mind, your heart, and your life to that which you don't yet know that you might contain that which is greater than yourself. So this is... <laughs> this I is, felt like I, God gave me brain just... <laughs> surgery this morning. <laughs> I felt my brain opening again. Wow, amen. That's why this is the first one. Because this will be read by people who know the Lord, who don't know the Lord. Right. To give to people who don't believe anything, open. You have to open. Start by opening your mind to mm -hmm. what you don't. And even people who have known the Lord for years but stopped, have stopped seeking. Mm -hmm. This is why this is the first one. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing is to open. And then all the rest will the come. The world in. shuts you yeah. up and screws the lid yeah. on. Yeah. And God opens up and he wants to pour in. But you also have at the, at the end of every page, you have scriptures yes. to back it up, yes. which I love. And you can go to the scripture then. And like this one, Isaiah 55, 1 through 9, Jeremiah 33, 3, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Yes. And it backs up. Yeah, yes. Talking about being an open vessel. Yeah, yeah. Every, every mystery has it. Yeah. And the ninth of Av, there the it is. What page it's, is that on, honey? It's 211. Which okay. is probably, <laughs> this is what you're going to be doing. Which is probably the 211th day of the year is probably the ninth of Av. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, the ninth of Av mystery. Mm -hmm. But this, this is most complete I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. In simple. Yeah. yeah. But the yeah. ninth, the mo most complete teaching. And what you know what it says? God knows every day, every hour, every minute. That's what... It, it, I, maybe you wrote this for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe the Lord, I pray he, he wrote it you for know, me. Because it was, I, I, I believe this book is supernatural. Yes. I believe God anointed you to too. do this. You wrote part of it here. Mm -hmm. That's, he I goes was up, up to his, the chambers really? upstairs <laughs> and he writes. He, wherever he goes, he's writing, <laughs> working, to. preaching. He never stops. This man, never stops. he's on a mission. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. That's right. And I'm going to pray over this book. And everybody that orders it, mm -hmm. I want you, I, I'd like to lay hands on these books. I like to anoint them. If you get a little oily book, it's a good thing. <laughs> but I want, to, I want to believe God. I believe, uh, Hubie, I honestly believe this is going to be supernatural. I, it's supernatural because it's, it's anything that speaks. Mm -hmm. Books don't always speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't really always speak. But this book, as I've gotten into it in the last 24 mm. hours, it speaks. Mm -hmm. That's and, what it and does. And at the, the end, there's a, there's a moment. There's a moment during, we don't say when, but some point, dur some point during that journey, the, the student, he receives the Lord. Now, but at the very end of the book is where he recorded what he did to re in receiving the Lord. So that's for anybody who reads the book. 
who is not a believer, at the very end, it has not only an ending, it has his encounter, mm -hmm. and it, he, give, he, write, he records his prayer mm -hmm. so that anybody can get saved. Mm -hmm. That's the point, you know, as well as for the believer, the unbeliever. I love know, so. it. So that's why it'd be such a great gift to give to people for Christmas. And so you could just call right now before Jim gets all excited to get in. <laughs> but you can call right now so you can get your copy, get the Baker's Dozen. Call 1-888-988-1588 and get your hands on this. It is... The moment you read the very, when I picked it up, and I, was, I started from the back. I don't know. I know you're supposed to start from the beginning. That's, but he, I always, that's the Hebrew version. Yeah, that's the Hebrew <laughs> version. That's I knew I had to have some Jewish in me somewhere. So, no, but just, when, and, I, and I read, I was like, wow, just the, first, just, just the first few words was ministering to my heart. My heart was so ministered to. My soul, my mind, my will, my emotions were so refreshed. I was so, I'm, I'm holding this book going, this is amazing. This is more than amazing. And knowing Rabbi, as we all do, by listening to his teachings, by reading his book, knowing him as our, our dear friend, I'm like, I, I know him. I know how this mind, your mind thinks and how you teach us. Everywhere we go, you're constantly teaching us. And Go to the page 364. Yeah, 364. Okay. And read us one paragraph, oh. would you? I have the whole thing highlighted. I, well, I was you can't trying not the, to highlight no, no. everything. The whole page. We can't, we how, can't read them all, but just read, no. just read the, I'll open, say the first, read the start. First few. It's called Life. home. Mm -hmm. Come on. How strange, said the teacher. We're born into this world. We've never been anywhere else, and yet we never feel at home here. It's the only place we've ever known, and yet still we're never quite at home within it. We're never at home with its pain and sorrows, with its growing old and dying, with its losses, its death, its imperfections, its darkness, its evils, and where nothing lasts and everything passes away. Even in the best of times and circumstances, something's always missing. It can never fill our hearts. And the longer we're in this world, the less at home we are within it. That's the first paragraph called home. Isn't Boy, that that's true? a mess. That, Isn't that, that one's so a mess. Isn't that so true how you feel? Maybe we'll oh. start reading one a day on our show or something because they're so good. I just read that opening, that opening paragraph and I'm just out loud by myself going, that's, I've never felt at home anywhere. And you know how many people... And I try to think, well, maybe it was where I was living at the place. <laughs> so I wouldn't feel at home there. And I always want to go back to where I was born and raised. But then I go back and I'm not home there. Mm -hmm. I never feel at home. Yes. That's because we're not at home. Right. Because home, we, home there is a home. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's Because we're made for that. Wow. Well, and that's what that's going to lead to. That's what it to. leads that, to. That's when we're finally going to be home. Isn't it true? Yeah. Wow. And the children of Israel yes. in Egypt were not yeah. at home. You talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the picture of salvation is, is Israel in Egypt. It's Passover, you know. And mm -hmm. so they grow up in Egypt, but the whole point is, yeah. and they think it's their home they, right. and they're slaves, but it's not. No. And Passover wakes them up so that they can come home. Mm -hmm. Jesus, is, Yeshua, Messiah is our Passover. Right. That we are now coming home. We've never been there before, but when we, when we get there to heaven, it's going to be a thousand times more home. We're finally going to say, we're home. This is it. Take this is why breath. we weren't at home, because we had something better. We had something so much better. That's why we're not at home. We're not made for, for a world that passes away. We're made yeah. for eternity. Right. That's why it never worked, because we're made for something better. That's why we're longing, yeah. because it exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's in yeah. our heart. It's so good. You know, yeah. It's so deep, and it's so wide. How many, wide, how many have so really simple. never really felt at home? on earth that you didn't quite belong here. Raise your hand. Raise your wave at me. Let me see. And I've tried. Boy, that's a lot of people. That's I've most tried. everybody. Yeah. And this, this makes you feel like you belong in heaven. It yes. Does. And you do have a yes, place. Yes, do. It says, <laughs> it's about coming home. Mm -hmm. Coming home to God. Yes. And coming home to home. Yes. My God. Yeah. When I got a prison and I mm -hmm. said, I want to go home. Yeah. And I had no home. Right. I had no place to go. 
Can I read just yes. this last part? <laughs> we're still on home, that page. <laughs> the place for which our hearts were made. Mm -hmm. The place of no more sorrows yes. and dying and death. No evil or imperfections and where nothing grows old anymore or passes away. Mm -hmm. The eternal, mm -hmm. the promised land, heaven. Yes. But we've never been there before. Mm -hmm. Yes, said the teacher, but when we get there, then for the first time in our lives, <laughs> we'll be home. Wow. Yeah. I love what the teacher says here at the mission. You are not yet home. Live today in the light of that. Yeah. Set your heart away from that which is not home towards that which is. Amen. Is that a good idea? Oh. Wow. This is an amazing book. And this book is for people who are wandering. Yeah. We're, we're, we're just pilgrims. Mm -hmm. This is going to put you... God has given you an anointing for... Yeah. The word for the Hebrew, yeah. for, mm -hmm. for the... You know, you've taken the very depth of the meaning of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever said I'm, I'm in love with a book. You haven't. I know you in books. And I, you know me. I wasn't, I, you know yeah. me. I, I didn't even read it for a few days after I got mm. it. Forgive me. I'm just, you know, <laughs> because I thought, oh, Rabbi's written a devotional. You know, after writing... <laughs> the most amazing book that has shaken America. It, this is not a book to save America. Yeah. This is a book to comfort you all the way to the pearly gates. Yes. Good. This is the book that God has ordained. Rabbi, forgive me for doubting <laughs> you because I really... I like sameness. I guess that's when you get old, you like comfort zone. <laughs> And I wanted you to do part two mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of your book, your, your first the book, The Harbinger. The Harbinger. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I, also, I want to prophesy that you mm -hmm. will write mm -hmm. part two of The Harbinger. Mm -hmm. It will come. You will yeah. it? It will come. It will come. Because it's there. Yeah, it will come. And the part two is the final judgment of America. It's there. He's, he's already preached it many times, but you, you had to listen. It's there. I hope you'll order even the baker's dozen and, and right. give them out for Christmas. You're always looking for a Christmas present. This is brand new. Nobody has it. It's brand new right now. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Kahn, The Book of Mystery. So it, and you haven't heard nothing yet. <laughs> oh. Wait till it's, you... Wait till you read The Two Shall Be One. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And this wasn't, this wasn't planned. <laughs> this wasn't no, planned. <laughs> no. We don't, you know, I'm kind of taken back in a great way. It's like, wow, Lord, you just took over. Well, I've, never, we, I've never read it since I wrote it. I've never seen it since it was there. This is the first right here. Yeah. And it, it's God's doing his own thing. Yes. And thank praise the Lord. the Lord, you know. Yeah. And he gets all the glory. And, and there are... And there are, there's a lot of prophetic things there as well, end time prophecy as well, and things like that. So you're, it'll be everything. It'll be everything. It's there. everything. But, it's yeah. it, it's everything. You know what it's going to do? It's going to speak to everybody individually. That's, yes. that's it, yeah. Like it's going to, it's going to zing in. Yeah. It's going to come in. It's those beautiful points that God's yeah. going to bring right into your heart and teach you and yes. love you. In a long time, I've never felt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm totally blessed. God's Thank embraced you. me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'm That's totally so blessed. awesome. The eternal yes. caring God. Yes. That's good. That's, the, that's, that's, the, that's the wonder. That's, that's the real miracle of this yeah. book. Yeah. 
The yeah. ultimate mystery is God yeah. and his love. It's the mystery of our lives, yeah. you know. We will be right back after this special message. Who are you? A teacher. A, A teacher, teacher of what? what? Mysteries. Mysteries. From the best-selling author, Jonathan Kahn, who brought us The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah, comes a life-changing journey to uncover the mysteries of God. When you open the Book of Mysteries, you'll be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey each day, revealing to you new mysteries of spiritual truth, end times revelation, and the secrets of overcoming this world. Explore all 365 mysteries in this unique daily devotional written to captivate your mind and bring you a unique, mystical, Christian, and historical perspective of God's work in this universe. The, the ninth of our mystery, that all these things happened again and again in, the, in history from God to the Jewish people on the ninth of Av. But there's another part of it that's called the Tenth of Av Mystery. And while they're losing their greatest refuge, God is planning another refuge. It'll be the greatest refuge for it will be America. And the same, the, the same think, place. I think the, the 365th one, the last one, <laughs> is powerful. The two shall be one. It is God in us. Yes. Mm. Our marriage in us. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Take account of every heartbeat and make your moments worthy of each one. Is that good? It's so good. The Book of Mysteries by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn can be in your hands for a donation to this ministry of $20 or more. If you would like to share the Book of Mysteries with your friends and family, donate $200 or more to the ministry and you'll receive a baker's dozen. That amounts to $15.38 per book. For a $55 donation or more to the ministry, Jim will send you Mysteries Volume 18. This offer has eight teachings from Rabbi Khan, packed onto seven DVDs and one audio CD. In the Prophets Bundle offer, you'll receive the entire Mysteries Volume 18. Both of Jonathan Khan's New York Times best-selling books, The Harbinger and The Mystery of the Shemitah, Tales of a Wandering Prophet by Hubie Sin, but that's not all. You will also receive the entire two-volume set of the Epic Holy Land Tour, featuring Rabbi Khan and Pastor Jim. The Prophet's Bundle is packed with so much great material that has a retail value of $680. But Pastor Jim is giving it all away to viewers who decide today to make a $100 donation or more to the ministry. Unlock the mysteries of the universe by getting your copy of the Book of Mysteries by best-selling author Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Call today, 1-888-988-1588, or go to our website at www.jimbakershow.com. You can also write to us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support to this ministry. Wow. And when I hit the ninth of Av, God showed me ninth of Av mystery in prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't think anybody else, <laughs> you know, knew. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe some Jewish people might know. And, and it's right here. Mm -hmm. But you see, what, this is the, the same dates yeah. that all these yeah. events took place. You say, yeah. well, what would that mean to me? Yeah. It means that God is God. It means that God, he's trying to say, this is supernatural. Right. You know, these people thought they were killing Jews. They thought they were taking over. He said, I control them so much that they were doing it on the exact same day. Over and over and over and over again. Why did God allow that? to say, I'm still in control. Yeah. We don't get it sometimes, do we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything God does in some way has to do with our life. Everything he does 
every mystery is ultimately it's got to be here. Yeah. So it's to the mind, it's the, but it's to the heart and it's to the life at the end. Yeah. Yeah. At, at I've the, got at, so much <laughs> that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> we did this and, week. And it's just, pages. all I can say is everybody needs to get this book. Everybody needs to take it and digest it. Just like Jim is doing, just like I'm doing, Zach and Sasha, those of us that have been blessed enough to receive it and and start reading it. And it is, it really does, it opens up your heart, it opens up your mind, it opens up every part of your being to him, to, to God. This is for the mature Christian, really. It's for the thinking Christian. It's for the, the person who really, really wants to get a little deeper in God. Yeah. Than, and I'm sure new Christians could even. Yeah. Read. I think yeah, it's going to be yeah. supernatural. Yeah. I do. And, and I, yeah. I think, don't you think it's going to be supernatural? Yeah. 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 I, I, I believe how. it's going to speak to people. Yeah. And, and even people who, who don't believe, but they're open, you yeah. know, they can get saved and, and go on the journey. Go on the journey. On at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end, you know, at the end, the teacher releases the disciple to go, you yes. know, but it's about the journey. Yeah. It's about the journey. Yeah. Could you go to page 21 by any oh chance? Boy. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea go. what I'm going to... No. It's your new book. <laughs> it's so exciting. Uh, can you I get to... This is the teacher. He is the teacher. I get to... I get to it's Rabbi means Introduce teacher. the teacher to his book. That's right. Hmm. Page 21, the heartbeat of the miracle. Do you remember that one? I do. There, I mean, there's so many. It's, <laughs> I mean, when I write a lot of stuff, sometimes I forget I parts of it. I have to think yeah. because there's so many of it. Yeah. yeah. But this is a good, a good one. They're mm -hmm. all good. Mm -hmm. I'm just picking some I just picked. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I just went through and flipped and opened them and started reading. And uh, so I'm actually giving you every one that I've looked at so far. <laughs> but the heartbeat of the miracle. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is a good one, and I want people to to know what it, it's like giving you this huge gift. It may be in a little package here, but it just it'll keep on giving every day. Yes, every day. That's it. That's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. This one and and there's there's ones you know much more. I mean they're, they're to the to the mind and all this mm -hmm. these you're picking some of them which are to the heart very mm -hmm. much but that's all part it always goes there you want me to read i've never read it i mean uh, you want me to read yeah uh, we want you to we yeah. that would be awesome thank you but you can you. pick one that you have one just a oh, favorite oh, no i i don't i don't you know but they're um, all your children right? <laughs> they are. Yeah. we were sitting on two large stones at the base of a small mountain the teacher leaned down to the ground picked up a rock and handed it to me what do you feel he asked nothing i replied a rock now put your hand on your neck do you feel anything my heartbeat. But the rock has no heartbeat, he said. Of course not. The rock exists as a rock with no heartbeat. It retains its shape, its size, its consistency, with no need of a heartbeat, but you have a heartbeat. Every moment of your existence hangs on a heartbeat. The moment it stops, your existence is over. That's the difference between a rock and your life. God ordained it. Rocks just exist, but life never just exists. It must strive to exist, fight to exist. Your heart must keep beating every moment of your life. If, even if you do nothing, your heart beats. Even when you sleep, it keeps beating every moment that you can remain alive. If you waste your moments on earth, still it beats that you can waste your time. When you sin, when you gossip, when you covet and hate, still it beats while you do so. When you weep, when you give up hope, still it beats so that even in your tears and despair, it still fights for you to live and to be able to cry. So the difference between my existence and that of a rock is your life doesn't just exist. It strives to exist. Your life is a miracle. Your every moment is a miracle. Your joys are a miracle. Even your tears are a miracle. Your life is the gift from God. Every moment is sustained by him. Every moment is a miracle. How does one apply this? You cease taking your life for granted. You stop wasting it, mistreating it, treating it as something less than the miracle it is. You cease to allow your life to be given to sin and what is less than God's will. You treasure the existence with which you were entrusted. You stop throwing away your moments. You treat your life and your time on earth as a treasure. You treat every moment as if there were a heart beating behind it, striving for that moment to exist. In short, you live a life worthy of every heartbeat. Wow. Paul. Oh. It's the mission. Hmm? The, you read the, the mission? The mission. The mission. Live, 
the mission. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Take account of every heartbeat and make your moments worthy of each one. Is that good? It's so good. And then is the scripture good? is Psalms 139, 14 through 17. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, wow. Oh. It just Say takes, I'm a miracle. Yes. I'm a miracle. Say it louder. I'm, I'm a, a miracle. miracle. You're a miracle. It's a miracle I'm alive. A miracle you're alive. It's, we're a miracle. That's right. It's so true. I'm fearfully That's and wonderful. That's how yes. God loves you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the miracle. The heartbeat of miracle. This one next to it, I like that. We <laughs> Everyone, I'm telling you. Every, but the, I it? love this explaining of Which one? the footstool. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, the yeah. footstool world, mm -hmm. and he explains mm -hmm. while the why the world is God's footstool. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Because that lets us know there's a power bigger than you and me. Yes. And bigger than politics. Yeah. Yes. Bigger than these billionaires that are throwing their money and their weight around right now, trying to, trying to move America into hell. Yeah, yeah. In a nutshell, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it, it. Lord says, "Heaven is my throne, earth mm -hmm. is my footstool." Mm -hmm. And so, what's it saying? Heaven is where God sits. He rests. His glory can be held in heaven because that's heaven. But he doesn't put his, he doesn't rest on earth. He puts his foot on earth. He mm -hmm. touches down on earth. He, he says, my feet shall be there. So if we are children of God, mm -hmm. then we have to live, and we have to live in this same mystery that we never put our full weight on earth. We never dwell, put all our weight, our, that everything's a problem. Everything that we, every problem we have yeah. is a footstool problem. Wow. Every, every, every concern we have is a footstool concern. We don't, but it's, it's, we're not mm -hmm. supposed to be wrapped up and lost in our problems. We're yeah. supposed to put our foot on our problems. Right. So we're supposed to put our, our foot on that because it's a footstool world. Yeah. And, that, and so heaven, so in the same way, we, that's what we do here. It's our feet. But where we dwell, we're to be dwelling in the heavenlies, even when we're now. It says you are seated here now in the heavenlies. That's just from one verse from God, you know. Right. The, so it's that one's called the footstool world. That's just Beautiful. in a quick nutshell. You make these things, are, which is life, and God, so that is so deep and so wide, you make it so simple for us to understand and to comprehend and get into our, our spirit, into our being. Because I believe, I believe God is like that. You know, lies are shallow, shallow and complicated. Mm -hmm. But the truth is simple and deep. It is. God is simple and deep. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so his, 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 you know, his mysteries, there's no end to how deep he is, you know. Oh. But... But they're also simple. If our heart is open, a child can get it. Yes. Yeah. I could just take you through page after page, the scene, the colors of heaven. Yeah. They're, they're all, they're going to touch you somehow. Mm -hmm. It yes. hasn't entered the minds of men. What God has. The things that God has yeah. prepared for those that yeah. love him. Yeah. This one and several of them are about how to see that now. How to end, one's called entering the heavenly dimension. How to live in the heavenly now. How to live a heavenly life now, no matter what's happening around you. That's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. so, so several of these things are that even now we can experience things that are yet to come. Yes. You know, I'll share one okay. if it's okay. You know, oh, one, one's, sure. one's yeah. called, it's a different kind of thing, but it's very, there are very different ones. One's called Pidyon Haben. Now, this is totally Hebrew. Pidyon Haben. Now, this is something that pretty much you would never see mm -hmm. if, you just, if you didn't know the Hebrew or you didn't know that this happens. And this is what it is, but it's mm -hmm. so crucial. It's called the Pidyon Haben mystery, and that's this. In the Bible, it says that every, every firstborn son has to be redeemed because in Egypt, you know, they were all redeemed. The firstborn son was redeemed by the Passover lamb. So everybody's indebted to God. So it says right after that, God says that every firstborn male has to be redeemed. Now, if a firstborn lamb is born, it's offered up as a sacrifice. The firstborn lamb is always, the first, always offered up. But a firstborn son was, it says it'll be for me. So what, what that was taken is that originally God said that all the firstborn sons are to come into my ministry. They're going to be belong to the temple. They're going to help the priests. They're going to be part of it. That's what it's saying. 
But later on, God says, you know what? Instead, I'm going to take the whole tribe of Levi in place of the firstborn sons. That's how Levi became the, the ministers. Mm -hmm. They came in place. So then God says, but when every son is born, you have to re still redeem the son. It's kind of like you're ransoming him back from the temple. You're ransoming him back from the, the, you know, the service of the Lord. And so they would pay a price. This is from the Bible. It was called Pidyon Haben. Every son who was born, this is every firstborn in the Bible, they, a price of shekels of silver would be given to the temple so that they would be, in a sense, free. Okay, now get that. Mm -hmm. All the time, all the, including Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua. When he was born, he was the firstborn son. So he had to be redeemed by giving shekels of silver to the temple. So there. So, okay, now, now listen. Now listen here. What happened before Jesus could die as the sacrifice? Judas, Judas was paid a price by the priests. So the priests now, for the first time in the history of the Bible and the world, the priests were returning the money. They were returning the silver that had been paid to redeem the son. And so they're giving the money back. Therefore, for the first time, the priests are purchasing a man. They are purchasing the firstborn son back. So by giving this back, it means that now Messiah is coming under the dominion of the priests and he's going to be now. It also means that when you did that, you know, the Levites came to replace the firstborn sons. Well, now the firstborn son is coming back. He's going to replace the Levites. The Le he's going to replace the whole Levitical priesthood. It's going back. Not only that, but, you know, now it means he has no redemption. He has no, there's no ransom for him anymore. Mm -hmm. He's the one who's going to become the ransom. If a, if a lamb was the firstborn, the lamb would be offered up. Well, he's not only the firstborn son, he's the lamb. So now when they, pay, when they gave back those shekels of silver, he now is going to become the lamb who dies for the sins offered up by the priests of Israel. Not only that, not only that, but remember what happened before he died. He was put on the, before the people, one man, Messiah, and one man, criminal, Barabbas. Barabbas. And we all know Barabbas, bad guy. That's how we know Barabbas. Well, they choose, they choose Barabbas, so Barabbas gets free, and Messiah comes. Well, here, but here's the thing. Messiah became the ransom for Barabbas, but what is Barabbas? Barabbas is a Greek name of a Hebrew name. What's his real name? Here's a mystery with Barabbas. Barabbas wasn't just a criminal. Barabbas' name is bar -Abba. It means the son of the father. Wow. <laughs> He's the son of the father. It's the pidyon haben. It's the redemption of the son. Messiah is the redemption. And when, this is just something you wouldn't see, it's there. And, and when not only the, the price of the son was five shekels, Messiah, his redemption was 30 shekels, it's five times six. Six in the Bible is the number of man. He was great. So it's the, he died as the pidyon haben for man, for all of us, for all of us. It's been paid, the price has been paid even in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pidyon haben. That's one of them. That's, That's one of the mysteries. Yeah. Oh. The great great mysteries. We had s some thoughts that we wanted to ask you about today. And um, your, your children, we, we haven't seen them in a year. And, uh, <laughs> Ali Al and Diel, and of course, beautiful Renata, mm -hmm. your wife, beautiful, lovely, amazing woman of God. And, and so how, how are how, how's Eliel, first of all? Eliel, Eliel, I would let's good. first of all ask about the firstborn. Well, El, speaking of the, the son, <laughs> Speaking of the firstborn. Well, born. something cool happened a month ago because we had a picnic. We had our Beth Israel picnic, and we do the baptisms there. And, you know, I generally don't, I generally be, I'm careful about young children because I want to make sure that they really know they're not just doing it for their parents. They really know they want to serve. But anyway, so I'm planning it, and Renata comes out, he says, Eliel says he wants to be baptized. And he's six years old, and and I said, really? I said, are you sure? He says, no, he wants, I said, he doesn't know what, he says, you know, he said, he comes, I said, Elliot, sit down. Let me tell you. He says, no, I want to follow Jesus with all my heart. Huh. I want to serve Jesus. I huh. want to serve. I said, do you, do you understand what it means? Yeah, I'm serving. I said, do you, do you remember, do you know what Jesus did for you? Yeah, he died for me and he rose for me. I said, okay, it sounds like you did. It sounds like you're okay. So, so uh, I just quickly, I have little pictures. If you want to see that. We want to. So, this is <gasps> the last at, minute. Look at this. is Eliel, he's six years old now. Boy, look at him. You're, he, oh, that is so awesome. Oh. Uh, 
He's making his he's making his proclamation to the whole world. Do you baptize your people often? Do you have well, we, baptisms we baptize out? them usually outside. We do it when the summer is the, the weather is good in New Jersey. We yes. do it in the we do it in the we do it in the lake there. Yeah. I love yeah. to baptize. Yeah. Yeah. I, in at Heritage, we would go out to a lake. One of our board members had a house on the lake, and we had thousands of people. I would baptize all day <laughs> long, and we'd have music, and so we'd literally have thousands of people yes. come wow. for our amazing. Saturday yeah. event. Yeah. And a few weeks ago, one of our new residents here coming from California, he said, would you baptize me? And... Uh, he was watching over television, and he, he, uh, he bought a dome house, one of the big dome houses here, it, uh, the biggest one we have. He bought a two-story and just said, you know, and his family was saying, what are you doing, you know? And then he's, he's, he's watching the program, hearing, just eating up the prophecies and the word of the Lord. And uh, he, he wanted to move here. He wanted to have a house here. And I, I don't know if he, he's from California. I don't know if he'll keep his California house or not. And he said, would you baptize? And so I said, yes. And so we have a swimming pool, which is down near the house that he's building, that we're building for him here. And so by the time the word started spreading that I was baptizing, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how many, half dozen or, or more, mm -hmm. we baptized that day. And uh, so that's something I want to do more of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe baptism is so special yes. that it's so important yes. that it is truly that outward profession, ex yeah. profession mm -hmm. of what's inside yes. your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And to, to pardon a phrase, there's a lot of mysteries behind it. And some, uh, of, them are, some uh. of them are in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of mysteries, but yes, yeah. I love doing it. We did it yeah. in Israel, yes. in the Jordan River. Yes. And there were so many people beautiful. that I think we had to do 20 at a time. Yes. But, but it was it wonderful. It was a beautiful there's thing There's something to about see. it. These, these two are our are, are co-hosts, but they're also producers of the show. They work every day. Yes. And they're researching materials for the show. All the news of the day, and I've got so much of it here, I won't probably be able to get to it today, but we double-check everything. So we're, we're digging, 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 digging all the time. And then we bring it into the revelation. Amen. So what to... Well, uh, I, I hope what I'm pronouncing out of the book, it. it. What hit you? Did, well, I, I really, there were several different things, but one of the ones that I really liked was actually near the beginning on day four. And am I pronouncing this right? Is it Ruach? Ruach. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, there may be some words you can't pronounce. Just read it's them okay. like you can. It's, it's okay. okay, right? It's okay. So like yeah. I said, the Ruach. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's All right. it. That's, great. That's Hebrew. Good well, it's, job. A ser it's a serious uh, day, and now I'm going to be laughing while I'm reading it. <laughs> oh, okay. But, so let's read it. it. It really is. It's awesome. It says, he took me. This is the teacher and, and the student. Right. He took me to an open desert plain. It was a windy day, so windy it was almost violent. Come, said the teacher. He was asking me to walk against the winds blowing, so I did. What is it like to walk against the wind, he asked. It's a struggle, I replied. In the language of scripture, he said, the word for wind is ruach. But it has another meaning. It also means the spirit. In Hebrew, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is the holy wind. So what happens if you walk against the wind? It creates drag. It becomes harder to walk and you get tired. In the same way, he said, when you walk against the Spirit, it creates a drag on your life. Everything you do becomes harder. It takes more energy to do less. So when you go against his Spirit, you're, you're fighting against the wind. And you can't walk against the direction of the wind without getting weary and worn out. Mm -hmm. And what way is the direction of the wind, the Spirit? The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it blows in the direction of the holy and blows against the direction of the unholy. Now try something else. Turn around and walk back the same way you came. Mm -hmm. So I did. 
I was now walking in the direction of the winds blowing. And what was it like, he asked. It was much easier, I said. That's because there was no drag, he said. You were walking in the direction of the wind, and the wind helped you walk, and it moved you ahead. It made your walk easier. So when you walk against the wind, it creates drag. But if you turn around, then the wind gives you power. So it is with the Spirit. If you turn, if you change your course, if you repent, if you walk in the Spirit, then the drag will disappear. Then the Spirit will empower you and you will move and will move you forward. And then everything you do that you must do will become easier. So if you walk in the Spirit, I said, life will go from being a drag to a breeze. Yes, said the teacher. For those who walk in the Spirit, the wind is at their back. And the mission is this. What part of your life is against the direction of the Spirit? Today, turn it around and start walking with the wind at your back. Oh, amen. Oh, that just takes a load off right there. He's yeah. like, oh. Don't you just feel encouraged? I mean, you just feel encouraged. Yeah. And that's what it is. You, ju- you just feel like... You know, I can do this because, you, know, you know, I have a lot of responsibilities on, on my plate. Yes, and, you do. And there are times where I do just, I just get tired. Right. And I just think, you know, what am I doing? Am I not managing my time right? What is it? How am I going against the wind? Yeah. As you say, what areas of my life can I give more over to you, Lord? To make this a little easier. Yeah. And, and he always comes through. But there are certain things you will never regret. Right. And that's one is giving more of your life to the Holy Spirit. You never wake up the next morning and think to yourself, ah, I shouldn't have given my life more of the Holy Spirit last night. You know what I'm saying? You know, another one is just reading the Word. You never, ever regret reading the Word. You'll never regret spending time with Jesus. Rabbi, thank you, Zach. You were asked to recently speak at a meeting linked to the Republican convention. Yes. Talk about wind. Not meant to back. <laughs> not when, no, no, I'm not, not sure about, where the wind was. I'm talking about <laughs> scare. If sometimes, the, sometimes to go to something when you're not sure what kind of audience <laughs> it's going to be, those are the scary ones. Well, yeah, and Rabbi has spoke in, you know, in front of in, at Congress. You, you spoke in front of all the different, I mean, we yes. can name everything you've been, yeah. and we've seen a lot of the video. And that's like, that's talking about that, the going with the wind. I mean, the Holy Spirit's literally pushing you yeah. out there yeah. Yeah. and you're that then you're that open vessel yeah. like the one we read about the open vessel to be used by god by the holy spirit yeah well actually so, you know when i when i got the invitation i said i went home and i said sweetie to my to renata i said i don't know if i can do this first of all time wise it's gonna be very tough and you know it wasn't scheduled and i had to cancel the things i don't know if I'm, I don't, I'm not sure what this whole thing and she says i think you should do it i think it's this i think it's the lord you know so the spirit i said okay you know i'm going you know yeah um so this was there were hundreds of delegates there, you know, of, of, of Repu- the ones who were doing the whole convention. Um, and there were, they asked for three speakers to speak, so I was one of them. I was the last speaker. Um, and I didn't hold back, as you know. I mean, I know, yes. that, I know that when the Lord opens the door, I cannot because I may never have that again. I may never have that chance, and I couldn't. Anyway. So I did, and I said also that, you know, on every side also that, you know, which, you know, if we want America to be great again, that's great, but... We cannot be, America cannot be great again unless it returns to the God who made it great in the first place. Amen. So, and they, Amen. and they, they were, you know, yeah. And, and I also, I believe I spoke about re- what happened to America, Reagan, when we were all gathered together, we prayed at Washington when everything was going downhill. I won't go in, and we prayed, you know, if my people, if my people, 1980, if my people, and then how God amazingly answered that and turned the whole course of the nation around as encouragement, if my people, if my people. So, so it went very well. You know, I was very glad the response. And I, I got off the stage and the first one who comes up, he said, oh, he goes, congratulations. It's Mike Huckabee. You know, oh, still, I, he was there playing the bass, him. you know, yeah. <laughs> so playing the bass for no. worship. But he was the first one to do it. So, so the, I believe it was the first time they had, as far as I know, had a worship service, you know, kind of launching the, 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 the whole thing. So I knew it was, it was, it was with the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen to your words, but, you know, you just have to say them, and the rest is in God's hands, mm-hmm. you know. So, yes, yes, yeah. And then I stayed for the first, I figured I'm in Cincinnati, I'm in Cleveland. Let me stay for one night. Let me experience what a... What a, you know, a, 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 a national convention is very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. You know, I, I went, one of the speakers um, at, at the beginning, he was a Hollywood celebrity, mm-hmm. you know, he, and he mentioned Jesus, you know, and I'm walking at the end, I'm walking in the dark because I had to leave early. I'm walking in the dark and, and a guy passed me, he says, you, and it was him. And he says, he says, 
I watched your DVD. He said, yeah, you tell it. He said, I love your speech. I said, I love your speech too. He said, I love that, you know, the harbinger, the harbinger. So there was a lot of believers. There were a lot of Christians there. A lot, a lot of Christians, you know, and those who are also struggling about what to do here, but there were a lot of Christians. Give us a prophetic update on the United States. The, um, uh, where are we headed? Where are we well, are right well, I'm now? Gonna I'm going to share something. I don't have it here, but I'll share it the next day we do this. But, but of something that happened in Israel that has to do with what's happening now and what happened in Isaiah 9:10. But it just happened. And also something with the Shemitah that happened had to do with Europe and the world and everything that's happening going there. That's from the Shemitah, the exact timing. But I'll get it. But the general, the overall thing is absolutely, since I've been here, I came here similarly before the book was released, but we recorded it here, The Harbinger. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was 2000, actually, we, actually it was 2011 when I first came. And then The Harbinger came out a few months, two months later. Mm -hmm. But since then, America has been following this, this, the same pattern of ancient Israel. It has not stopped. There has not been, not been a mass revival. It has been accelerating under this government. It has been accelerating under this culture away from God, just the way ancient Israel did. We were talking, it's the same pattern because it, there's very few nations which were founded from the beginning, founded by the Puritans here on God. It's Israel and America, if you, if you compare that. And yet now we're experiencing the exact same thing, turning away, ruling out God, turning everything upside down, saying, you know, warring against our foundation. Well, we're watching. It's almost every day you hear another thing like, oh my, how could it happen? You know, it's again and again. So we are following that. And so what's very dangerous is that it's, it's like this. You know, we're, you know I, did, I once spoke about the tipping point. Mm -hmm. We're past the tipping point. You know, we've pushed over. You know, it's been pushing over. The ball is rolling down the hill. So here, the thing is, we're, and here we are at a crucial election, and the key thing is, if, you know, I, I said, it's not going to take another activist president to pull, make things go faster. All it will take now, because the ball's already rolling, yeah. all it will take now is any leader who is not strong enough to stop the ball from rolling, and it's going to accelerate. And right now, we have a very, 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 we've never had an election like this. We've never had a choice like this. We've never had the decision like this. A lot of believers are torn, of course, you know. Um, on one hand, let me say this, which is what I've said, because I have to say this. On one hand, you know, you, you know the, to, if we say that we'll be great, but without God, without returning to God, we're basically saying Isaiah 9, 10. Yes. So we can't do that. We cannot do it with a spirit of arrogance or pride. That's not going to save us. Pride is not going to save us. Saying we're going to be the greatest is not going to save us. Mm -hmm. It's God alone. God That's alone. Right. So one hand, we cannot, we need, to, we need to pray for the candidates, you know, yes. from the Republican side. We need to pray, but, but the answer is not going to be that unless there's a, a change, unless there's a repent, unless there's a change to God. There has to be. We will be right back after this special message. Who are you? A teacher. A, A teacher, teacher of what? what? Mysteries. Mysteries. From the best-selling author, Jonathan Kahn, who brought us The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah, comes a life-changing journey to uncover the mysteries of God. When you open the Book of Mysteries, you'll be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey each day, revealing to you new mysteries of spiritual truth, end times revelation, and the secrets of overcoming this world. Explore all 365 mysteries in this unique daily devotional written to captivate your mind and bring you a unique, mystical, Christian, and historical perspective of God's work in this universe. The, the ninth of our mystery, that all these things happened again and again in, the, in history from God to the Jewish people on the ninth of Av. But there's another part of it that's called the 10th of Av mystery. And while they're losing their greatest refuge, God is planning another refuge. It'll be the greatest refuge for it will be America. And the same, the, the same Thank place. You. I think the, the 365th one, the last one, <laughs> is powerful. Yeah. The two shall be one. It is God in us. Yes. Yeah. Our marriage in us. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Take account of every heartbeat and make your moments worthy of each one. 
Is that good? It's so good. The Book of Mysteries by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn can be in your hands for a donation to this ministry of $20 or more. If you would like to share the Book of Mysteries with your friends and family, donate $200 or more to the ministry and you'll receive a baker's dozen. That amounts to $15.38 per book. For a $55 donation or more to the ministry, Jim will send you Mysteries Volume 18. This offer has eight teachings from Rabbi Khan, packed onto seven DVDs and one audio CD. In the Prophets Bundle offer, you'll receive the entire Mysteries Volume 18. Both of Jonathan Khan's New York Times best-selling books, The Harbinger and The Mystery of the Shemitah, Tales of a Wandering Prophet by Hubie Sin, but that's not all. You will also receive the entire two-volume set of the Epic Holy Land Tour featuring Rabbi Khan and Pastor Jim. The Prophet's Bundle is packed with so much great material that has a retail value of $680. But Pastor Jim is giving it all away to viewers who decide today to make a $100 donation or more to the ministry. Unlock the mysteries of the universe by getting your copy of the Book of Mysteries by best-selling author Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Call today, 1-888-988-1588, or go to our website at www.jimbakershow.com. You can also write to us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support to this ministry. Thank you all for being with us. Yes. And the, you can call 1-888-988-1588 to